I am Kimberly McNabb. And I'm Barrett McNabb. And let's let's talk about something that just happened in the news. Uh, two teens have recently been arrested and charged with murder, among a number of other crimes, um, in in regards to filming them hitting bicyclists um, with their vehicle, uh, including going, "Hey, go ahead and and bump him. Go ahead and and hit him." And um, unfortunately, uh, they, they did this to a number of people, and the last person they did it to was a retired police officer uh, who, who died. And, uh, yeah, they had stolen four vehicles. This is all in the same day. Uh, four vehicles hit a 72-year-old person. Fortunately, their injuries were not life-threatening. Uh, but they're on film saying, get his... Right. I just, and I think this was at like six o'clock in the morning, really early in the morning. It, yeah, obviously these people, uh, when they're hit, they're, they're riding their bicycles, they're, they're going with the flow of traffic, so they're not looking behind them. Uh, and who expects somebody to deliberately uh, go ahead and, and with malice, a forethought, um, uh, hit you? And I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely, absolutely uh, insane. Now, the two mothers have spoken out, and it, interestingly, the the mothers have two different, two different things um, to to say. One mother said, uh, "You can't believe everything that's in the media. The truth is going to come out." I, I don't Which know is how. It's an odd thing to say. I don't see what we're missing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's their uh, their own video recordings uh, are uh, from filmed on their phones uh, that were recovered. Um, you know, showing showing the crime. Yeah, I just can't believe the brazenness to which they video record it. I mean, if you don't want to be charged with the crime, don't film yourself doing the crime. Right. <laughs> and. Uh, so obviously they don't care what happens to them and uh, the parents um, I mean how would you feel if, well I mean if that were our kids I, I would just you know I, I have the same I have the same feeling that the second mother said which took the opposite stance of the first mother and and said um, I don't know why he did this I don't know if God can forgive this I mean yeah. I mean so so she's recognizing that this is this is wrong um, and, you know, a lot of this is going to, you know, as they go to, to trial, one person had, uh, one of the teens had just turned 18. The other is uh, 16 going on 17. They're both being tried as adults. Oh, good. And, um, and so, you know, we really have to look at depraved indifference um, is going to be a, a factor. One of the things that whenever you are looking at, uh, at a crime and and by the way, I am uh, I have a bachelor of science degree in criminal justice with a specialization on law enforcement. And so one of the things that's important to look at crime is called um, mens rea. And it is a Latin trans with the English translation of a Latin phrase of the guilty mind. And in this instance, when they said, go ahead and get him. That sounds go pretty, ahead and bump uh, him. I mean, they they are they're, they're doing it on purpose. Yeah, they're they're doing it on purpose. They have a guilty mind. They know that there is a reasonable expectation that there is going to be injury that's going to occur uh, as they're speeding in a vehicle and the person's riding a bicycle and they're being hit from behind, not able to turn away, uh, not knowing what's what's going on. I mean, the the last video you see is of the individual actually going across the hood oh. of of the car and. You know, again, it, 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 this goes to this, this depraved indifference. When um, one of the, the teenagers was, was arrested and, and charged, he said, you know, I'm a, I'm a juvenile offender. Go, go ahead yeah, and— it just be a slap on the wrist. Just be a slap just on the wrist for me. Disregard for any consequences and, and, you know, lack of concern for human life. And, you know, I've heard arguments on, um, you know, other outlets saying, oh, well— you know, they'll probably argue, the lawyer will probably argue that the, especially the male brain isn't fully developed until age 25. Well, okay, so you want fifth graders to decide what gender they're going to be? They're far less developed, and that's a far, you know, a, a very life-altering decision, and we have 18-year-olds who are allowed to join the military, and we have 18-year-olds, 17, 18, 19-year-olds going off to college, picking out their major, so determining a course for their lives and signing on huge amounts of student loan debt. So clearly, 
you know, th- th- their brain should be formed enough to make the decision and know what they're doing in taking a human life. Yeah. And, you know, again, it just goes to that um, that mentality uh, that said, look, you know, this is going to be a slap on the wrist. I'll be out of here in 30 days. And and it really is just it, it's just unimaginable that uh, they would they wouldn't have remorse. I mean, n- none of the none of the or teens at least care enough about their own life. Like, yeah. I want to ruin it by going to jail. My one of my first thoughts is this kid's mother didn't teach him consequences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to first of all, to go joyriding it through the night is in a like, stolen vehicle a stolen vehicle I, i'm sorry but you know people like to picture an angel here and a devil here mine is my mother mother's going to come out of the woodwork and just slap me medea style right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and i think uh, parents need to raise their kids more like that um i'd rather pay for therapy than for my child going well, to jail <laughs> it's the same thing that back in april of this year um we had three uh, young men that uh, were uh, taking landscaping uh, small boulders and riding in the back of a pickup truck and tossing them at uh, vehicles going the opposite direction. And um, it, it did result in a fatality. They they uh, threw one of these boulders. Um, they were going uh, 70 miles an hour. The, the, the uh, 20 year old female was going uh, 70 miles an hour in the opposite direction. So when you combine that, that's 140 miles an hour um, of velocity. And they tossed this uh, small boulder and it went straight through the, uh, the, the windshield and uh, killed the woman. I mean, just absolutely killed the woman. And, you know, the, the big thing that, that they said is we have to go back and see that and they took a photograph of the dead woman as a memento um, because they thought that that would be a good trophy to have. And, um, you know, this is just absolutely, again, I, I, I've, said the, I've said the phrase already, but just depraved indifference. I mean, the, where are the morals that a, a young that, that adult— It's the parent's job. And, and, and it's, the, it's the parent's job. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and them. And, you know— teach them right from wrong and in consequences. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I've always said, um, and I know I've said this, you know, uh, as a parent, because we have two small children, um, the, the, the greatest thing that I think I can uh, teach our son and our daughter is to be kind, just to, just to be kind, to have a good moral compass and to, um, to, to enter this world and, and be kind. Now, that doesn't mean to be naive. I don't, I don't, well, I don't mean no, to be naive. But, but the world Especially needs a little bit daughter. of kindness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the world needs a, a little bit of kindness. And, and, you know, I just cannot imagine that uh, how funny this was to these three yeah, I, men. I don't understand what, what the point was like wh- what do you have to gain from this and this is these things are another example why and I've, I've said this for years one of the most destructive forces in this world is bored young men you get a bunch of bored teenage boys they're going to get into trouble and that's you know they have too much energy no guidance uh, they need to be kept busy and, and people in general uh, need to keep, be kept busier um, and that's one reason why I get so scared watching the border crisis because and we've said in our um, immigration video that most of these people that when you see the fi- footage is mostly young fighting age men young men they're I'm like single I don't men see by women. themselves. I don't, I don't see women in sight. I don't see children in sight. These are not poor, desperate families. And what did you know? They're they're not bringing any skills. They don't have jobs lined up. So what are they going to be doing? They're going to be hanging out, and they're going to get into trouble. They're going to rob people. And what happens when you have a bunch of young, vibrant, you know, like uh, vir- virile men? hanging around each other, they're probably going to want a woman. So I would be very afraid to come across these individuals as a woman. 
Right. That makes um, sense. That, so that scares me. Um, so, so yeah, board, board, board men need to be kept busy and, and productive. Well, I mean, just again, going back to, um, you know, these, these uh, fatalities that we have, um, you know, to your point, Kimberly, these, these kids were obviously bored. Um, they weren't playing video games. They were playing real life. And, and so, you know, with deadly consequences. And their, their parents should have gotten them jobs. It should have gotten them jobs. But, but the, the big thing is, is, is the, the remorse. The lack of remorse yes. is, is truly, truly um, saddened. Uh, I'm yeah. very sad about that because obviously their moral compass is destroyed. And that's not to say that, that they're not going to find God in, in prison. Um, but, but, but still, I mean, it, it, it's, what, it's what important now uh, and to the families. Yeah, and, and to be so callous at 16 years old, I just can't imagine, I mean, it, to deliberately do all of that at such a young age, I I don't know if they're going to be able to be rehabilitated or, you know, to, I mean, yeah. I hate to say anything's impossible, but the chances are very slim. So um, they're going to be tried as adults, thank goodness. But do you think they would get the death penalty? Well, so it's interesting to to say that um, because Nevada does have the death penalty. Um, The 18-year-old, it's definitely on the table. Uh, the Supreme Court has ruled that juveniles, so one of the um, one of them is uh, 16, mm-hmm. uh, juveniles are, are not eligible uh, for the death penalty. Um, and uh, to also include um, life without the possibility of parole, uh, that has been uh, ruled against by the Supreme Court as well. So there's mm-hmm. so there is um, uh, you know an opportunity for for that individual get to get out. Um, and so I mean you know the 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 thing on punishment is it needs to be swift, certain, and severe. And um, so it needs to, needs to happen quickly. You know, we can't have years and years and years go by um, because you, you lose, um, you know, the, the ability uh, to, to have that punishment understand the crime and fit, fit with the crime. Um, it needs to be certain. There has to be you know, precedent that look, this is you know going to happen to you, which is why it's so dangerous um, that a lot of the um, uh, liberal prosecutors across some of the the major metropolitan areas in the United States are not or choosing not to prosecute mm-hmm. um, uh, offenses. So that eliminates that that uh, certainty of that you will be right. punished, um, and then severe. Uh, it needs mm-hmm. to be needs to be, uh, you know, extremely severe uh, so that it deters other people. Um, you know, there are studies that, that show that um, the death penalty does not deter crime. But I know it, it, with a firm statistic that every single person that has been executed um, for, uh, you know, capital crimes, um, every single one of them, none of them have ever committed another crime again. <laughs> and that, that, kind of hard that's what, that's one of those, <laughs> yeah, that's one of those 100% certainty, um, yeah. that if you are, uh, have the death penalty, you, you never, uh, commit another crime again. And that's, and, and the victims can rest knowing that the person's never getting out of jail. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, I get really tired of hearing people go, oh, that's cruel. You know, I am afraid that they will not be punished harshly because we live under the skies of, oh, we don't want to be cruel, you know, or uh, one of them, uh, you know, was removed from his home for like eight years. And, and, and um, but the thing people need to think about is when crime is not punished harshly, you're not just not trying taking away the lesson to be learned from the individual who committed the crime you're also removing the lessons from society that when you do bad things bad things happen to you and that's how I word it with with our kids so really robbing society of that lesson yeah and you know and again you know the the criminal justice funnel um, you know, police officers are obviously the, the very first um, line of, of that uh, the criminal justice funnel. And police officers have a, a really 
um, uh, powerful position in the fact that they can uh, have they have discretion. They have discretion on whether or not they're going to detain somebody. They have discretion on whether they're going to um, arrest somebody. Um, and, but once that happens, and all, and they're doing it because of um, uh, you know the reasonable suspicion or probable cause, um, they you know these are the burdens of proof that they give over to the prosecutor's office and. The, the prosecutors obviously have a uh, prosecutorial discretion on whether they're going to prosecute or not. And that is, um, you know, unfortunately, we are losing that lesson because people are not prosecuting. And, and you know, the, there's the theory of broken windows. Mm-hmm. And broken windows is, um, you know, if you have a building that that you know people are throwing rocks at and are breaking the windows, and, and the building uh, is is not well kept, and and um, you know it's getting graffiti on it, it just it starts to feed on itself, and then well, the people say, oh, they don't have enough respect to maintain, you know, the windows, right? And what do they care about this? What do they care about that? I mean, as well, it's like seeing. You know, a couple pieces of trash on the fo- the ground. Well, okay, clearly it's okay to do that. Right. And it's so just a precursor. You no, know, it's just dirty. Yeah. It just uh, it just ramps up, and it's a precursor, and and so um, you know, that's one of the the things that's important. Now, uh, community based policing is also important, um, and that's getting uh, the police officers on the ground and interacting with the populace. But but again, you know, the level of respect for our law enforcement. Um, you know, is, is I think, hindering. Uh, and it's because of a few bad apples. Um, we, we've had numerous stories of, of bad bad apples in, in law enforcement that are doing things, but that is not everybody. That's yeah, not everybody. People need to keep in mind that there are bad apples in every profession. I sure. mean, come on, how many times have you been to a grocery store and experienced bad service? But how many times have you been where you experienced okay or really good service? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Well, please stay tuned after these messages and Asthma Podcast will continue. Hi, everyone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy our show with all the stories we share, we would love your support. And it's as easy as clicking that subscribe or follow button. This will ensure you never miss an episode and keeps us bringing you these important stories. Your support makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast family. Thanks and keep tuning in. 